Welcome to our review on motors. Now, hopefully we remember that when we actually place a conductor carrying a current within an existing magnetic field, then those two fields are going to interact with each other and then a force will be exerted on the wire. If we actually take a loop of wire and place it in a magnetic field, then what we see is that the force that generated on each side is in the opposite direction. And therefore, that's going to actually make that loop of wire turn when it's actually got the current flowing through it. In order for the coil to spin continuously, what we've got to make sure of is that the current has to move in on the right and out on the left. So it's got to go in on one side and out on the other side, because if we didn't have that, what would happen is that we'd end up with it. So it just kind of turns so far, but then obviously the current is going to change. So that would then mean the force would change, so it would never spin. Now, the way that we actually achieve that in terms of the design of the motor is by using this thing called a split ring commutator. Now, go very careful because we're going to have a look at how that phrase changes ever so slightly in a different device later on. So in our motor, it's a split ring commutator. And you can see a picture of it in the bottom left there. You can see why it's called a split ring commutator because there's a gap in the middle of the two sides. Now, what we actually find is that by using this split ring commutator, then the current is able to flow the same way from the battery, but it's not then going to change the direction of the coil spinning. So what we find is that the force on the left of the coil is always up and the force on the right of the coil is always down. So we have that continuous motion in the one direction. So if we look at the diagram to show what happens on the left hand side of the coil, we can see that it's half purple. And then on the right hand side, we can see that half is orange. Now, if you use Fleming's left hand rule and line your fingers up accordingly, you will see that the purple side of the coil is going to be pushed upwards and the orange side is going to be pushed downwards. Then as the coil turns, what you'll see is that we don't actually have current flowing at that point, because if you look carefully at the part of the diagram that shows the split ring commutator, then you can see that the little brushes are actually not touching the coil itself. So what we see is there, there's a gap and that's where they're lined up with. So even though there's no current flowing, the coil will continue to turn because it's got its own momentum. So it doesn't just grind to a halt instantly, it will keep turning past that point. Now what we can see is as that coil's continued to turn, it's aligned so that our purple side is now in the opposite direction. So what we find is that the purple side is being pushed downwards and the orange side of the coil is being pushed upwards. And it's just because as that split ring commutator is turned around further, then it's come into contact with the little brushes on the edge there. And because obviously our circuit hasn't changed its direction of current, then what we see is in the coil that does change. So that that means that our purple side is now got the current flowing away from us, which means that it is going to be pushed downwards as a result of Fleming's left hand rule. If we consider the fact that we will probably want to change the speed of our motor at some point, then there are four things that we could potentially do to achieve this. First one is we can change the magnitude or the size of the current. So obviously the greater your current, then the faster it's going to turn. We can change the strength of the magnetic field. And again, the larger the strength of the magnetic field, the faster it will turn. We can increase the number of coils on the wire to make it spin faster. And we can also change the length of the coil. So the longer it is, the faster it spins. So any of those four things can be changed in order to change the speed of our motor. And as always with these questions where it's asking you how a change could be brought about, look carefully. If it says, how could you increase the speed of the motor, then don't just write down the magnitude of the current because that won't get you the mark. You'd need to say increasing the size of the current. So just look carefully to see what the question is asking you to do and then put in that level of detail into your answer as well.